If you've seen one of my most recent videos, you would know that Parallels has just updated their software to be able to support Windows on the M1 Max. And I'm pleased to report that it works totally fine. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it up and how to get it working on your own Mac. As you can see here, I have a base model 2020 Mac mini, but I have got this to work on my Pro and also my Air, so it doesn't really matter which model you're using. Anyway, let's go into the screen and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so first things first, you want to open up your web browser and you want to go onto parallels.com and you wanna actually sign in and make an account. Now, if you've already bought Parallels for Mac, this is probably gonna be supported already. If not, use the link down below to sign up for an account and also purchase Parallels for Mac. That is an affiliate link, by the way. Now, once you've purchased Parallels, you just want to put these keywords into Google, just search it and they'll bring up this page. Uh, and you'll see the Welcome to the Parallels Desktop 16 for M1 Mac Technical Preview. So you wanna scroll a little bit further down here until you see step number three, install and activate. And you can see the actual version number here for the M1 Mac. So we're gonna to want to download that. And we're gonna click allow. Okay, so we're gonna double click on this to install, open. And we're gonna click accept. You're gonna put in your user password. Now you're obviously gonna to have to give Parallels some permissions. Um, so just click allow and yes and agree to all of these. So once the install is finished, you're gonna get this information screen from the installation assistant. And it basically says that your Mac is running on ARM architecture. So it means you can only really run Parallels with an ARM OS as well. So what that means is you can't use an x86 version of Windows, you need to have the ARM based one. So as it says here, to create a virtual machine, you need a VHDX or ISO image with an ARM based operating system. Now this is important again, because this is the only one that's gonna work with this particular version of Parallels. So what we'll need to do is we'll actually need to download an ARM based version of Windows. So if we come back to your web browser, and what you wanna do is you wanna to go to this website here, which I'll link in the description. Uh, and this is going to be the Windows Insider Preview, specifically the ARM Insider Preview. Now you will need to log into this and also sign up to be a Windows Insider. It is free and this particular download is free as well. And then what you wanna do is you want to download the Windows 10 client ARM64 Insider Preview. Okay, so once you finish that, it's gonna be about eight and a half gigabytes in size, and you can see it here in my downloads folder. We're gonna hit continue, and it's actually going to automatically find that .vhdx file that we've just downloaded, and we're gonna hit create. And what this is gonna do is it's actually going to build the virtual machine, install Windows, and also set up Windows on the VM. Now, if you haven't already signed in, this is going to prompt you to do it. So I'm just gonna do that now and skip forward. Now, the next thing you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to actually activate your version of Parallels. So come back to the original Parallels website where you actually downloaded the original program and you'll see just underneath that an activation key. So you wanna copy that and you wanna paste it in here and then you wanna click activate and that's essentially going to activate your version of Parallels. And you can see there it's been activated successfully. And now it's going to continue configuring the virtual machine. Okay, now after a few more minutes, you're gonna actually get to the desktop here. And you can see it is usable pretty much straight away. So let's just make this a little bit bigger here. And you can see it's already installing the drivers and everything for the mouse and the keyboard. Um, so if we come down here, click on that, works totally fine. We'll go on to Edge and I'll actually download Steam because I'm going to be doing some gaming tests a little bit later on. You can see here it works totally fine. 
install Steam, run. And that is now going to install. And as you can see, you can actually come up here and you can make it full screen. Um, so this is going to look just as good as it would on a native Windows computer. So there's absolutely no issues at all here. You can see very quick, very smooth, uh, very snappy. So if we exit full screen again, and you can actually see if I press command on the keyboard, hold down command and then press tab, uh, I can literally switch between Windows and Mac just like that. So it's pretty impressive. And if we're not using it anymore, we can come up here and we can actually pause it. And that's just going to suspend it or we can actually shut it down or stop it. Um, but it's always better to shut it down from inside the VM. Um, so if we unpause this and we come here and we just go shut down, that is just going to shut down the VM, save everything, and you'll be good to go for the next time you open it up. And what we'll also do is we'll go into Activity Monitor, and I'll give you guys an idea of how much RAM and CPU it's taking up just by sitting here idle. So obviously there's nothing going on inside this VM, it's just sitting there. Um, so at the moment it is using only about 5% of the CPU. Uh, well, obviously it's going to fluctuate. So, so you can see there, it's really not using much of the CPU at all. There's still 80% of the CPU idle. And if we come into the memory tab, it is using a lot of memory. So it's using over six gigabytes of RAM. As you can see here, the swap memory is actually very, very low. On my laptop, I saw this get up to about 1.6 gigabytes and they're both eight gigabyte RAM models. So this Mac mini and all of my other Macs, they're all eight gig RAM and I haven't really had any issues yet, but if you are gonna be doing a fair bit of VMs and virtualization, I definitely do recommend trying to get the 16 gigabyte version if you can, because as you can see here, just literally sitting on the desktop, if we unpause this, just sitting on the desktop is using 6.2 gigabytes of RAM, and that's, that's completely maxing out the RAM on this machine. So I definitely do think at this stage, Getting the 16 gigabyte RAM option, if you plan to do any kind of VMs at all, is definitely a good investment. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully this how-to video was helpful and you enjoyed it. And if there's any issues, let me know in the comment section below. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.